Hey guys, it's Chloe. Today I'm just doing a quick little intro for my bookshelf tour. Yes, it is finally here. Finally. Just a little advance warning. I did not dust my shelves because I'm lazy even though they really need to be dusted. On the bottom shelves, the very bottom, I had to hold the camera, well my phone, and I couldn't because I couldn't get down low enough. Uh, so those are basically just an overview but it doesn't matter. So I hope you guys enjoy my 2015 summer bookshelf tour. Here we go. Okay, so this is the overview of my shelf. I couldn't really get far enough back to uh, do like a full overview, but this is it. Um, now my room's not finished yet. Soon there's going to be like a recliner over there, but uh, for now this is like my setup. And I absolutely adore these shelves so much. They came from Ikea. Uh, I'm not exactly what, um, not, I'm not exactly sure what the, like, name is of them. But I love these shelves so much. And I love how they look. Um, of course, as I acquire more books, um, the things like the, uh, the pictures are gonna come off to make more room. But for now, this is my setup. And let's go ahead and get started. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Every Day by David Levithan. If I Stay and Where She Went by Gail Foreman. The Funny Thing Is and Seriously I'm Kidding by Ellen DeGeneres. Don't Call Me Baby by Gwendolyn Heasley. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. Then I have this piggy bank that says Original Princess on this side and has Aurora, Snow White, and Cinderella on the back of it. I've had this since I was like nine, so I just decided I'd keep it and put it on my shelf as decor. And I have this Little Mermaid that I painted for my grandma when I was really young. I was probably like six or seven. Uh, so that's why the skin is blue and the painting is horrible. But I keep it up here because I have a lot of my mermaid books up here. Actually, all of my mermaid books are right over here. Uh, so I thought I'd just uh, put it right over here. Mermaid by Carolyn Turgeon, Turgeon. White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Atlantis Rising by Gloria Craw. Forgive My Fins, Fins Are Forever and Just for Fins by Tara Lynn Childs. A Hundred Sideways Miles by Andrew Smith. And Struck by Lightning, the Carson Phillips Journal by Chris Colfer. So I'm just going to come across to the next top shelf. First, right here, we have my uh, Unforgivable Curses uh, lanyard, which has a dark mark right here, and my house pins, and I just keep it right up here for more decor. And then we have my uh, Slytherin Crest uh, poster type thing that I got for my birthday from Victoria, as well as my Deathly Hallows rubber bracelet and my and my Lego Harry Potter pen. And then I'm not going to pull these down, but we have uh, two little like Harry Potter book things of ornaments. And they just, they just hold ornaments really. And then audiobooks of Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban. And then there are two J.K. Rowling books up here that I will show you right now. Very Good Lives by J.K. Rowling, her 2008 Harvard speech. And The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, a.k.a. J.K. Rowling. I come right across again to the last top shelf and we're going to start right here where I have this black lanyard that I keep all of my buttons on from reading related to Paper Towns, Alice in Wonderland, Little Mermaid, Twilight, Harry Potter, it doesn't matter just all of my little round buttons and on the bottom I have this little voodoo doll thing that I've had forever and is starting to fall apart. <laughs> Once Upon a Time Out of the Past by a multiple uh, authors but it's basically the untold stories of the TV show Once Upon a Time which is my life. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. An Arc of Trial by Fire by Josephine Angelini. I'm not going to take it out of the box, but it's an arc. Then we have The Remedy, The Program, and The Treatment by Suzanne Young. Then we have the Percy Jackson series. We have The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian, all by Rick Riordan. And then we have Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Ultimate Guide. Next, I have this little tissue box that says use in case it feels. It used to have tissues in it, but now it doesn't. And I just keep random things in there. Like I have book outlet coupons. Uh, this is actually a letter that Lindsay Cummings wrote to me uh, in reply to my fan mail. I have some divergent stickers, uh, like a lot of random stuff in there. Then we have uglies, pretties, specials, and extras, all by Scott Westerfeld. So this next shelf is again a lot of random books. 
Oh, if you guys are wondering, I really just organize my books in what I think looks the best. And this is currently what I think looks the best. So first we have this Jolly Rancher uh, apple scented candle because you guys know I'm addicted to candles. And I kind of just randomly threw it up there again as decor. Oh yeah, and my shelves are really dusty. I need to take a day to dust them, but today was not that day. So we have two bind-up editions of The Secret Circle by L.J. Smith, the first one being The Initiation and The Captive Part 1, and the second one being The Captive Part 2 and The Power. Graceling by Kristen Kishore. One Path Midnight by Jessica Shervington. Then I have Fablehaven, Fablehaven Rise of the Evening Star, Fablehaven Grip of the Shadow Plague, Fablehaven Secrets of the Dragon Sanctuary, and Fablehaven Keys to the Demon Prison, all by Brandon Mole. Then I have The Looking Glass Wars, uh, Seeing Red, and Arch Enemy, all by Frank Bedore. Soul Screamers, Volume 1 by Rachel Vincent. Delirium Stories by Lauren Oliver. Aragon, Eldest, and Brazinger by Christopher Paolini. Moving on to the next shelf, we have more Harry Potter. Surprise, surprise. So I'm not going to take these books out because you guys know what they look like. But I have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. As you can see, I have multiple copies of Deathly Hallows. I have my original Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows copy. I have a limited edition with limited edition cover change of Deathly Hallows. And behind it, I have another copy of Deathly Hallows that I kind of just keep there to save room. I don't know how much room I'm saving, but it's there. Um, so I have three copies of the Deathly Hallows. Then in front, I just have these little Lego Harry Potter figures. I have Dumbledore, Hermione, and Harry Potter in his uh, Quidditch outfit. If you guys want a more in-deep look at my Harry Potter collection, I actually made a video about that. I forgot to list like two things, but it's okay. Um, but I will link that down below. Then I have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which couldn't stand up. That's why it's, like, leaning over here. I have a second copy of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, this one in the UK edition. The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. Muggles and Magic, J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter Phenomenon. Uh, this is only up to, I think, the Order of the Phoenix book and Goblet of Fire movie. So it's not anything new, but I saw it at a used bookstore and I really wanted it. And then Harry Potter Hogwarts Journal. And now we are at what is basically my contemporary lover's shelf. Um, this is not all of my contemporary, but it is a bulk of my contemporary books. And and this is actually one of my favorite shelves on the entire thing, just because of the way it looks. Like, I mean, move this little voodoo doll, and you see how pretty that looks? Like, it's so pretty. So first we have This Star Won't Go Out, a like memoir by Esther Earle with Laurie and Wayne Earle, and an introduction by John Green. Then we have my John Green collection. Actually, this is like all of my John Green collection, but this is like my actual John Green books that I own. The Fault in Our Stars. Paper Towns, which I did a book face paint of, so you should go check that out. I will link it down below. Looking for Alaska. And An Abundance of Catherines. Fun fact, these four books are actually in the order of which I loved them the most. The Fault in Our Stars being the first, Paper Towns being the second, Looking for Alaska, and then An Abundance of Catherines. Then I have this little Walmart candle that smells like sweet pea, and it's a really nice spring summery scent that I love. Then I have this little canvas wall art that says the world is but a canvas to the imagination, which was said by Henry David Thoreau. And it used to be on my wall, but when I got the bookshelves, I was like, I have to put this on my shelf. And I love it, and I just, it has that nice, like, bright feel to it, so I just decided to put my contemporaries on all sides of it. Then I have this candle that I got from the dollar store that when you smell it like this, it smells like fresh linen, but when you burn it, it does not smell like anything. We have Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver, Seventeenth Summer by Maureen Daly, The Distance Between Lost and Found by Katherine Holmes, Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen, and Burn for Burn by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. Moving down to another shelf, this is another random shelf, just stuff that I could fit on here. Uh, I have this picture of the Eiffel Tower, uh, really for no reason. I had it at my uh, dad's house, and then uh, when I moved in here, it just got put on the shelf because I didn't want to put it on the wall. I also have this little stone sand dollar that's very sparkly. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you kind of can. And I have this Dollar Tree candle that when you sniff it like, like it is, it smells like candy canes. But... When you burn it, it does not smell like anything. 
Reminds me of Christmas. We have Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. Then on this side, we kind of have my Rainbow Rowell collection. Attachments. Eleanor and Park. Fangirl. And Landline. Next, we are at a, another one of my favorite shelves, which is basically all the books that re look really good together and all, like, really popular books. So first we have this little donkey... Well, to it's a toy. Um, and I got it in a Happy Meal whenever, like, Shrek the Third or Sh Shrek the Last One was really popular. I think it was Shrek the Third. Um, and it still works. Like, I found it and I wanted to keep it. That's all it says. But I love Donkey. He's my favorite character. So I just, I just keep him on the end over here. And he just, he chills there. So right here we have my favorite favorite series after Harry Potter, which is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. And guys, I'm so excited for winter. I need to start like a reread of this series. We have Fairest, Cinder, Scarlet, and Cress. And then soon winter will grace the shelves as well. Next we have another one of my favorite series, which is pretty up there with Harry Potter and Lunar Chronicles, which is the Murder Complex duology. We have the Murder Complex and the Death Code, and these are by Lindsay Cummings. Then we have the Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. We have the Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay. Then we have the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. We have Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, and For a Divergent Collection. Then here on the end we have the Legend Trilogy by Marie Lu. We have Legend, Prodigy, and Champion. Then we have another shelf of books I think just look good together. And for starters, we have another candle. This was like one of my very first candles in my collection. And it smells like garden rain, which is really nice for when it's like rainy. And in Florida during summer, it's basically rainy all the time because of hurricane season. So first up, we have two books in the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare. We have Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince. And then we have the extensive series of the Mortal Instruments, also by Cassandra Clare. City of Bones. City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, which sadly I have started but I have not finished yet, and then the monster that is C City of Heavenly Fire. Then I have another copy of City of Fallen Angels. This is like the start of my hardcover collection, which just, this like, this is it. I only have this and City of Heavenly Fire in hardcover. Then we have the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead, which again, I also have not finished the series yet. Well, I kind of fit them all into the shot. We have Vampire Academy, Frostbite, Shadow Kiss, Blood Promise, Spirit Bound, and Last Sacrifice. So we are getting towards the end of my shelves where um, over in this like leftmost corner by the wall, I've kind of just put some random things. Um, but I have first and foremost the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. And for those of you who don't know, the first book that I have like in this like loose copy is currently my traveling book that's supposed to be coming back in September and guys I am so excited to get it back that's going to be the best birthday present ever um I think right now it is currently in New York so here we have a bind up of the first three books Book of Shadows, The Coven, and Blood Witch and then we have books 2 through 15 again as I said the first book is out on uh it's out traveling I guess that sounds really weird to say The Coven Blood Witch, Dark Magic, Awakening, Spellbound, The Calling, Changeling, Strife, Seeker, Origins, Eclipse, Reckoning, Full Circle, and finally Knight's Child. So next I have a piggy wink that actually has change in it and it's getting pretty full and I drew, like I colored this when I was... Oh god, I think I was like 11 or 12, and I call this my camo pig because I literally took every single permanent marker in the package and drew all over this. Um, so this is my camo pig, my rainbow camo pig, and I have, god, I've had it for so long. Next, I have this Walmart candle that smells like hazelnut cream that I got from my nani because she didn't like the smell of it, and I was like, uh, this is amazing, I can totally take that off your hands. I personally think it smells like like cinnamon and coffee. So kind of like a, uh, maybe like a butterscotchery, well it says hazelnut cream, but kind of like a butterscotchery or maybe like a, like a snickerdoodle. I don't really, no, I don't like snickerdoodles. 
Then I have Beyonders or World Without Heroes by Brandon Mull and Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. Okay, so we are getting close to the end. We have a few more shelves left. The first thing you probably notice on the shelf is the random Dr. Pepper can that I have there. And there is a reason behind this can. So this can has Captain America on it, and this was one of the collectible cans uh, from when the first Avengers movie was coming out. Uh, I have had this can of soda since July of 2012, so we're looking at three years right now that this can of soda has been somewhere in my room. Often I have wanted to drink it, because if it's not open, it doesn't go bad, but I have just held on for dear life with this Dr. Pepper can, and it has gotten beaten up over the years, um, but it's okay, because I still love it. I love Dr. Pepper, I love the Avengers, and this has just been a constant thing on my shelf, and I just go with it. So first we have my Twilight collection. Yes, I am a Twilight fan. So first I have two of the uh, Twilight uh, Complete Illustrated Movie Companion Guides. Um, this one being Twilight, and this thing is like, beaten up. I've had it for so many years. This thing is so old. It goes back to like my Twilight Obsessed days back in like fifth grade. So it's been like, oh, it's been so many years. I'm having like, I'm like reminiscing with this bookshelf tour. Oh my god. And then I have the companion for New Moon. And when I got this, I was so excited. Like looking at all the pictures, it was like I had already seen the movie. Uh, and then I saw the movie and it was like, incredible. So this is where Twilight should be. Instead there is just a dust jacket because I have started rereading Twilight. This is my third Twilight reread uh, so I kind of just stuck the dust jacket here and did not care to put the book back for this video. I have New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, The Official Illustrated Guide, Twilight the Graphic Novel Volume 1. All of these are by Stephanie Meyer but you already knew that. Twilight Director's Notebook by Catherine Hardwick and if, like, I realize they change directors throughout each movie, but I wish there was one of these for every single movie. Because I read this cover to cover in sixth grade twice, and I loved it so much. Because it's so fascinating looking at all the different ways that they created the movie. And I find it so incredible. And, like, my favorite page in this entire book, I'm going to find it for you guys. These are my favorite pages in the entire book because I find it so incredibly interesting to know what Catherine Hardwick carried with her while directing this movie. And I just, it's so fascinating to me. I don't know why, but this is my favorite page. And then I also have Nightlight, a parody by the Harvard Lampoon, which is a newspaper, the newspaper for Harvard University. And this book was so stupid, but... It was like a funny stupid, so I just keep it next to all my Twilight things. And then I have the very extensive Beautiful Creatures series. This series just does not stop. There's always like a new piece of it coming out in some way, shape, or form. So these are all by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll, and I'm going to quickly go through them. We have Beautiful Creatures, Beautiful Darkness, Beautiful Chaos, and Beautiful Redemption. And then we have the spin-off series, Dangerous Creatures and Dangerous Deception. This is another one of those random shelves of books that just look decent together I suppose. Um, and I'm gonna quickly go through this one as well. The first part of this is my Sarah J Moss books. These are all of the books in the Throne of Glass series. So we have the Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and Air of Fire. And with Air of Fire I've started it but I wasn't feeling it at the time I started it so I put it back down and I just haven't picked it up yet. I'm sorry. But it will happen before Queen of Shadows. Then I have two books in the, uh, I'm not sure what this series is called, but I have the second and third book, and these are by Amanda Hawking. I think this is the Wake series, the Wake trilogy, something like that. I have the second one, Lullaby, and the third one, Title. At the time, they didn't have the first one in hardcover, so I just haven't gotten it yet. I have Proxy by Alex London. Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi in this old boring cover that I want the new one. Mind Games by Kirsten White, which was kind of an eh book for me. The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. That little strip of yellow there? Yeah, that's The Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Maggs. And it just, doesn't that like yellow pur and purple spine just bring the entire shelf together? Because I feel like it does. And that's kind of why I put it there. The Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Maggs. The Goddess Test by Amy Carter, which is an amazing book. I really really want to keep reading the series, but I just haven't yet. 
The Bodies We Wear by Jen Roberts. This book is signed. Oh, I forgot to show you guys, but The Distance Between Lost and Found, which is like a million shelves up, is also signed. Then I have Ruby Red and Sapphire Blue by Kirsten Gear. Then I have Daughter Smoke and Bone and Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. And guys, I have tried reading Days of Blood and Starlight so many times and I'm just not feeling it. Like, I've tried reading it, I've tried the audiobook, and it's just not working. And the thing is, I loved Daughter of Smoke and Bone, so I don't know why it's not working. And then The Host by Stephanie Meyer, which we're supposed to get a sequel to, but she's like, oh, I'm writing a sequel, and that was how many years ago now? I mean, don't get me wrong, Stephanie, I love you, but I need a sequel to this book. And now we are down to the bottom shelves of... They are so close to the floor that I need to hold my phone to film. I'm going to try and keep this steady as possible. So I am not going to lie to you guys. This shelf that you're looking at right now, I absolutely hate it. I hate it so much. Just because these are like, these are, you know, kids books that I don't want to get rid of and I want to give to my kids. And then it's also classic books that, you know, you don't want to get rid of classics. You kind of just have them there. And I mean, I have two copies of Romeo and Juliet. I think it's just two. No, I have three if you count my complete works. But just like an overview, I've got some kids books, some classic books. I've got a who's who in mythology book. Um, and the only reason I have that is because I have this weird obsession with mythology that I really love. So there's that. Uh, of course, next to the children's books, I have the Fifty Shades trilogy. I have the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe, Fallen Up by Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas, which is like a biography. Well, it's not like a biography. It is a biography. I have uh, Ernest Hemingway's four novels in the Barnes & Noble edition, uh, which was not mine, it was my dad's, but... And then I have William Shakespeare, The Complete Works. Just because these shelves are on the bottom, I don't want to have to, like, pull out books and everything, um, and I'm not going to try. Uh, most of these, well, actually, some of these books on my shelf I also inherited from my dad. All of the Gregory Maguire books um, over there, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister, Mirror, Mirror, Wicked, A Light Among Men, all of that I inherited from my dad. Um, then I have Finding Angel and Seeking Unseen by Kat Heckenbach, which Finding Angel is amazing. Both of those editions are signed. She is a local author and a friend of mine. If you could please go check out that book, it would mean the world to me. It's such a good series and she's writing the third one or she, I don't know. I think she's writing the third one right now, um, but those two are signed. Then I have External Forces by Deborah Ricks, also signed. Aquasynthesis, Flashdown Volume 1. And then, um, and then Elite of the Week by Precarious Yates, which is also signed. That one actually got sent to me because Precarious Yates is a friend of mine as well. And I actually don't know. She didn't really send it to me for any reason. I think she just sent it to me to send it to me, which was really nice. And then I have Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts, which I've seen this movie. I actually didn't know it was a book uh, until like a year ago, but I saw the movie with Natalie Portman. Absolutely loved it. So I definitely want to read the book. Then I have Arcadia by Mandana Tohiti, which is also signed, though that book wasn't my cup of tea. I have Stepping on Roses, Volume 1 and 2 by Rinko Uida. Ion by Arena Tanamura. And then I have The Silmarillion, The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, all by J.R.R. Tolkien. Then I have Outlander by, by Diana Gabaldon, and that cover is so hideous that I really don't want to show it to you. And I've started Outlander, and I just haven't gotten really far in it. And then I have Son of a Witch by Gregory Maguire. And then on the very end of my TBR jar, which you can kind of see. So this shelf actually used to be a lot messier until I switched it up and fixed it a little bit. But over on the left, I have all the books that I've received from Quirk Books, which is the, My the Mystery Writers of America cookbook, Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, and Kid Presidents by I don't remember who, and then Tic Tac Tome. And then I have a little Spider-Man piggy bank that doesn't have any change in it, but when my other piggy bank fills up, I'm going to start filling this one. Then I have two amazing smelling candles, as usual, maple glazed apples and peach and mango. And then I have a little teeny tiny candle, you can't really see it, but I never burn that because once you burn it, it's completely gone. But it looks like a piece of fudge. I actually thought it was fudge when I first saw it. And then I have a few, like, random nonfiction books. I have Webster's Thesaurus that I got from my 6th grade geography teacher who was the coolest person in the world. He still is. And he, like, wrote in it and everything and he gave it to me. And then I have my AP Psychology Crash Course book because I took AP Psychology during my junior year of high school, uh, which was actually last year. And I, I love the Crash Course book so much I have no idea why, so I just decided to throw it on there. You never know when you're going to need it again.
And then I have Championship Writing, 50 Ways.